pros and cons of transcatheter aortic valve implantation. These are my disclosures. The PARTNER trial was the first clinical trial to demonstrate the efficacy of TAVR in both inoperable and high-risk populations. TAVR was associated with a significant decrease in overall mortality at five years compared to medical therapy, although survivors in this high-risk population was limited due to medical comorbidity. In high-risk patients on the right side graph, TAVR was shown to be equivalent to SAVR out to two and to five years in terms of death and disabling stroke. Likewise, the core, core valve self-expanding valve was tested in the pivotal trial for inoperable and high-risk surgical patients, showing a benefit overall for medically treated patients and potentially showing a survival and stroke advantage out to two years in patients treated with transcatheter valve versus surgery. In this trial, surgical mortality was 18.9% and TAVR was 14.1%. Superiority was planned at one year. As you can see from the curves, the primary benefit of TAVR was obtained in the first six months, and this was maintained out to two years. The PARTNER 2A trial studied intermediate risk patients randomized to TAVR or SAVR using the Sapien XT system. Here, mortality and disabling stroke were shown to be comparable in groups receiving either therapy at two years. Intermediate risk was defined as an STS score of 3 to 8 percent with limited frailty. As with any field, new technology experiences innovation that changes clinical outcomes. The introduction of the Sapien 3 valve has had a positive impact on clinical outcomes as shown by numerous clinical registries. The, pen the benefit of the Sapien 3 valve was compared to the surgical arm of Partner 2A in a retrospective propensity analysis by the Partner investigators in 2016. In this analysis, the primary endpoint using registry data compared the randomized surgical data and showed a statistically significant benefit of TAVR over surgery in terms of all-cause mortality as shown in this slide. On face, it would appear that TAVR would be an ideal therapy for patients of all risk strata. However, persistent clinical questions remain in key, key clinical areas that will determine its rate of adoption in low-risk patients. In the remaining slides, we will review the paravalvular leak, valve performance, stroke, pacemaker implantation, bleeding risk, kidney injury, and durability fields in relation to its adoption. Paravalvular leak and valve performance. We have learned a significant amount about PVL over the last 10 years through careful anatomic and clinical analysis. Predictors of significant PVL include undersizing the transcatheter valve, valve positioning of the device, and incomplete contact of the valve with the native annulus. Post dilatation is the first line method to reduce PVL after TAVR. Using the same delivery system balloon or a separate balloon, post dilatation is associated with lower rates of PVL and total AR at 30 days. Post dilatation can not only reduce PVL, but has the added benefit of increasing valve area. Major points for both balloon expandable and self-expanding valves are listed here. Extreme caution should be taken in patients with high-risk anatomy for annular rupture. Shown here is, is an example of a self-expanding valve with a large area of non-contact posteriorly. The first method to reduce this PVL is to post dilate with an appropriate size balloon with the hope to expand the valve frame. PVL may also regress spontaneously after five to 10 minutes and often with protamine as frequently seen in surgical valves. In the event of severe malposition of the transcatheter valve, a second valve can be used to create a longer seal zone the leaflets of the first valve, when expanded by the second valve, form a long area of sealing, while the new leaflets start to function. This is, an, this is an important consideration when a valve is placed too high or too low relative to the annulus. If PVL remains after other measures, 
Placing a plug in the leak is another option. Quantifying and localizing the leak by TEE is important. Part of the difficulty in understanding PVL after TAVR has been related to the application of different definitions of severity and the difficulty in quantifying PVL on ECHO. Updated guidelines for VARC definitions are to be published soon, but a standardized grading system is necessary to more clearly understand the incidence of PVL and its clinical impact. PVL has been reduced over the years in part due to the design advances in the transcatheter valves themselves. The Sapien 3 valve, shown here, has undergone three iterations, with the last in the bottom right, with the Sapien 3 valve, which has a pericardial skirt wrapped around the bottom of the frame. The Medtronic family of heart valves has also undergone a transformation from the original core valve classic to Evolute R to the Evolute Pro, which also has a pericardial wrap at the lower end of the frame. Head-to-head -head comparisons in Partner 2A show much lower rates of PVL in surgical valves than TAVR, but it also does show that the rates of very significant moderate or more PVL in TAVR has almost now been eliminated. Moderate PVL in the core valve pivotal trial is also present at slightly higher rates than the Sapien valve. What is the impact of PVL on clinical outcomes? This has been studied using the Partner 1 dataset, showing that patients with mild, moderate, and severe PVL have an effect on survival. In Partner 2A, moderate or severe PVL, but not mild PVL, was associated with increased mortality at two years. The clinical implication of these findings have to be confirmed with longer-term follow-up, but this has changed clinical practice with the goal of attaining mild or less, rather than trace PVL. This may reduce complications such as stroke or annual rupture that can occur with post dilatation. The safety of leaving mild PVL was further confirmed in the Sapien 3 registry. In conclusion, the decision to post dilate is based on a careful risk benefit analysis and should not be made purely based on the severity of PVL alone. One must evaluate the landing zone risk for adverse outcomes versus a successful post dilatation. Valve performance has been stable out to five years in the Partner 1 trial in terms of valve area. TAVR has consistently been shown to have larger valve areas than SAVR. The core valve system may have even greater hemodynamic benefit than say, the Sapien valves, given its supraannular design. This is evidenced by the extremely large mean valve areas that were seen in the pivotal trial. The most recent data from the Sertavi trial also showed impressive hemodynamic benefits of TAVR over SAVR in terms of both valve area and mean gradients. Valve areas by labeled valve size are shown here for the Sapien 3 valve. Stroke is the most feared complication after TAVR by patients due to its ultimate impact on independence and on autonomy. Stroke prevention has become a primary focus in TAVR and there are continued efforts to reduce stroke rates to even lower rates through better techniques and cerebral protection devices. There have been numerous studies searching for both clinical and anatomic predictors of stroke after TAVR. Many factors such as prior stroke, new atrial fibrillation, post dilatation, carotid disease, and aortic atheroma may influence stroke risk. It is important to distinguish early stroke from late stroke. Early stroke most commonly occurs periprocedurally and is related to embolic phenomenon after valve deployment. Late stroke occurs in these sick patients as well, defined as occurring after 30 days and is most often due to medical comorbidity. The most comprehensive review in 2012 identified chronic atrial fibrillation, PVD, prior stroke, and anticoagulation as factors associated with late stroke. In the partner trial, all strokes were equivalent in TAVR and SAVR out to two years. There was suggestion that TAVR may have an early high stroke rate, though that was not statistically significant. However, the subsequent partner 2A trial showed lower stroke rates at 30 days for TAVR than SAVR, which persisted out to two years. The core valve high-risk trial similarly showed non-significantly 
lowest rates of stroke for TAVR at one year, which persisted out to two years. The stroke rates have further been reduced with smaller size delivery sheets. In the Partner 3 Sapien 3 registry, stroke rates were greater than 50% lower with TAVR than surgery. This slide shows the overall TAVR stroke rate in the various U.S. randomized trials. Stroke rates now appear to be consistently lower with TAVR than SAVR, as shown in this slide in various major clinical trials. Please note that these patients constitute varying risk segments. The TVT stroke rate for all commercially treated cases has dropped over the past three years from 2.6 to 2.4%. Disabling stroke with the Sapien 3 device is now agreed to be lower with TAVR than surgery, with stroke rates less than 1% in transfemoral access. In comparison, stroke rates in surgery remain constant at at least 3.5%. When comparing Sapien, Sapien 3 to surgery, strokes were almost doubled in the surgical arm versus TAVR. Strokes impact clinical outcomes tremendously. Survival at three years after a stroke can be reduced by as much as 20 to 30 percent and is particularly important in older populations whose life expectancy is only a few years. This fact was further highlighted in the core valve trial, in which an even greater disparity in survival after stroke was seen. Cerebral protection filters have been developed for temporary protection of the head vessels during TAVR to collect debris. Debris has been collected in greater than 90% of TAVR procedures and can occur at many different stages of the procedure. As shown in the slide, debris can be composed of aortic valve tissue, thrombotic material, and even polymer. Three different filters have been developed, each with a specific mode of deployment and protection. This slide summarizes the key features and current status of each device. This includes the Claret Sentinel, the Keystone TriGuard, Edwards Umbrella, ICS M-Block, and Transverse Point Guard. The Claret Medical Sentinel is placed through the right radial artery via a six French sheath and provides coverage of the innominate and left carotid arteries. The TriGuard device is placed via a 9 French sheath in the groin and covers all three head vessels. Its intent is to deflect any particles to the lower body. There appears to be clinical benefit in emboli protection. However, clinical benefit is difficult to define from imaging. An overt stroke benefit may impact cognition more than stroke. We can't reliably identify patients at risk, and 99% of patients have embolic material in the filter. It does appear that the device is safe, and embolic protection devices may be considered standard of care in patients undergoing TAVR in the future. Meta-analyses of five different trials using the Sentinel device show consistent results, and when pooled, are statistically significant in reducing the rate of stroke. The Galileo trial will help define if more anti powerful anticoagulation, specifically rivaroxaban, can reduce these events even further without increasing bleeding. Likewise, the Atlantis trial will randomize patients to Coumadin, Apixaban, or DAPT after TAVR. The implications of medical therapy are wide-ranging, but may have profound effects on leaflet thrombosis after TAVR. This phenomenon was first described in 2014 after a number of patients in the Portico IDE trial were found to have thrombus on their TAVR leaflets. Thrombus was associated with, re with restricted leaflet motion on 4DCT. This phenomenon was not only seen in TAVR valves, but of all types and also in surgical valves, but at a much lower rate. A high index of suspicion for leaflet thrombosis should be present in patients with a new mean gradient above 20 millimeters of mercury and increase in gradients greater than 10 millimeters of mercury or reduced, reduced leaflet motion. Coumadin reversed the thrombosis in all patients, and moreover, thrombosis has not been seen in patients on Coumadin. More research is underway to characterize this finding in its context in TAVR. 
Pacemaker implantation is common after any procedure on the aortic valve, but much more so for TAVR. The complex anatomic relationships of the aortic valve and the conduction system make it clear why TAVR leads to interruption of normal conduction, as TAVR frames interact with key locations in the conduction system. Predictors of pacemakers after TAVR include EKG predictors, such as right bundle branch locked, block, left anterior fascicular block, and long QRS. Anatomic predictors include calcification, interventricular, interventricular septal diastolic diameter, and LVOT size. Finally, procedural factors including the use of a core valve, lower depth of implant, predilatation, and oversizing may affect pacemaker rates. The Sapien 3 registry analysis confirmed many of the same factors as previously described, but specific to Sapien 3. Right bundle branch block has consistently been shown to be the highest risk factor. With this information, physicians have begun implanting higher, which has reduced the rate of implant pacemaker implantation. Pacemaker rates vary according to valve type as this slide shows, with core valve and the lotus valve having rates exceeding 20%. A summary of pacemaker rates for balloon expandable valves is shown here. And a summary of pacemaker rates for self-expanding valves is shown here. Pacemaker implantation has an important clinical impact. In the study from over 1,100 patients from the partner, patients who received a pacemaker had a lower recovery in EF after TAVR than those without a pacemaker. This was found to be an important cause of death in this analysis. Pacemakers increase length of stay and rehospitalization. Late complications are well described in the literature and include device infection, erosion, and lead failure. In conclusion, conduction disturbances in pacemaker are a frequent and not benign complication of TAVR. Risk is determined by a complex interplay of patient substrate and procedural factors. Careful attention to modifiable predictors of conduction disturbances must be made and a conservative strategy of pacemaker implantation should be followed as proposed by standardized guidelines. Bleeding and acute kidney injury. Transfusion after cardiac surgery is common, occur occurring in at least 50%, 57% of patients. In the partner trial, major bleeding was much more common in SAVR than TAVR, as shown here. Major bleeding was one of the highest predictors of mortality at one year in the partner trial with an odds ratio of 2.36. The rate of major bleeding decreased for TAVR from 17% down to 10%, mainly due to a reduction in sheath size. Late bleeding was also an important factor in survival at 12 months in the partner trial. Vascular complications have progressively decreased, however, with the increase evolution of newer and smaller delivery sheets. AKI, acute kidney injury, occurs in TAVR due to many factors including hypotension, emboli, and contrast administration. The rate of AKI after TAVR ranges depending on the severity from 3 to 20 percent. AKI has been extensively studied in many TAVR populations in the U.S. and in Europe. However, in comparison with surgery, AKI is much more infrequent with TAVR. This slide shows numerous predictors of AKI after TAVR. Many factors relate to the patient and other factors relate to the procedure. Durability will play an important role in deciding when TAVR should be used in younger patients. NeuroPCR featured a rep retrospective study by Devere et al that suggested that TAVR degeneration occurred at a much higher rate than originally thought, with a significant number of valves demonstrating SVD at six years. This ignited an explosion of investigation to define and report TAVR valve integrity with unified definitions. Freedom from reoperation for SVD in surgical valves does not reflect freedom from SVD overall. Long-term durability data from surgical valves do not include functional assessments and are therefore not comparable to durability data after TAVR. To date, there is no evidence that TAVR valves degenerate earlier than surgical valves. Long-term data on TAVR is still missing. Nonetheless, sufficient long-term data 
is on TAVR is needed before a low risk and younger popu lower risk population is targeted. Five year echo data from Partner One was recently published, which showed no evidence of early valve degeneration in terms of gradients or re interventions. The Partner Five Year Analysis was almost 6,400 patients and was the largest core lab based study of transcatheter valve durability to date. It showed excellent hemodynamic trends without structural det deterioration at five years and it showed that severely abnormal hemodynamics that were suggestive of valve thrombosis or stenosis were rare. This suggests overall that there was excellent midterm durability of transcatheter valves. There has been no correlation between death and mean gradients in retrospective analysis, further suggesting that early SVD is not occurring. This slide summarizes some of the major findings regarding TAVR valve durability. Finally, major catastrophic complications have been rare in TAVR, as shown in the Partner 2A data. This is also confirmed in the Sapien 3 registry, in which complications such as annular rupture, MI, coronary obstruction, and endocarditis were uncommon. In conclusion, the major metrics concerning TAVR have been reviewed. Stroke is now extremely rare in TAVR, while PVL rates are much improved. We are awaiting long-term durability data on TAVR, and high pacemaker rates remain a clinical burden. These metrics and outcomes will continue to guide clinical decision-making between TAVR and SAVR in the future. Thank you.